Welcome to our lecture online. In the previous video, we used Green's theorem to solve this particular problem. We had to find the work done by moving through a vector field defined by this equation right here on the circular path of x squared plus y squared equals a squared. So try to find the work done. And we did that by solving the right side of Green's theorem. And we evaluated this component. It ended up being a constant, not equal to zero. We realized this is a non-conservative uh, vector field, and therefore there was a number to be found equaling the work done, and it ended up being minus 3 pi a squared. So we're going to now solve this doing the line integral along that path, and see if we get the same value, and then again see how much easier it was to do it using Green's theorem versus actually doing the line integral. So since we're moving around the circle, we can probably use polar coordinates. So this can be written that r squared is equal to a squared. And x and y can be defined as follows. We can say that x is equal to a times the cosine of theta, and y is equal to a times the sine of theta. And then dx and dy can then be found by taking the derivative of those. So let's do that and plug those in. So we have dx is equal to minus a times the sine of theta d theta, and dy is equal to a times the cosine of theta d theta. So let's go ahead now and plug that in for the work done. So the work done is equal to the integral around a complete circle. So that's going to be equal to the integral uh, from 0 to 2 pi, because we're going to integrate all the way around 360 degrees, y dx can be written as a times the sine of theta, and dx can be written as minus a times the sine of theta d theta, minus 2 times x, which is a times the cosine of theta, times dy, which is a times the cosine of theta d theta. So now we have this written in polar coordinates. And notice there's only one variable left in there, which is the variable theta. So notice that we can factor out an a squared here, an a squared there. And let's see here what that looks like. And a negative as well. So let's put out a negative a squared. So work done equals minus a squared times integral from 0 to 2 pi. And let's see what we have left. So that leaves us with a sine square of theta plus 2 times the cosine square of theta all times d theta. All right. So notice we have two of these. Unfortunately, not just one. But we do have a sine squared theta plus 1 cosine squared theta, which is equal to 1. And then we have 1 left over. So this becomes equal to minus a squared times the integral from 0 to 2 pi of... So the sine squared theta plus 1 of these cosine squared theta is equal to 1. Plus we have 1 cosine squared theta left. Cosine squared theta d theta. So now we need to go to the double angle equivalent of the cosine square of theta. So this can be written as minus a squared pi of the times the integral of 0 to 2 pi of 1 plus 1 half times 1 plus the cosine of 2 theta d theta. All right, let's see here. I probably need another parentheses. Okay, so that gives us uh, 1 plus a half. All right, so this is equal to, I'm hoping that you're beginning to really appreciate Green's theorem because this is a whole lot harder than it was on the previous video, isn't it? So let's go ahead. So this becomes equal to minus a squared times the integral from 0 to 2 pi of 1 plus a half, so that would be 3 halves, plus one half times, I'm going to leave some room here, of the cosine of two theta d theta. And you know what? I'm going to split it up into two separate integrals. Or at least I'm going to rewrite it just slightly differently. So it'll be three halves times d theta plus one half times the cosine of two theta d theta. 
because here I have the cosine of 2 theta, which means I need a 2d theta here to be able to integrate that. And if I multiply this times 2, I have to also divide it by 2. So I need a 1 half there as well. So now I can go ahead and integrate this. I can go and integrate this. And I will end up with the following. This is equal to minus a squared times. So this will be 3 halves theta. So 3 over 2 theta evaluated from 0 to 2 pi. That's straightforward. And here we have plus 1 quarter the integral of the cosine, well, that would be the sine, and it's the cosine of 2 theta, so this becomes the sine of 2 theta, evaluated from 0 to 2 pi. Like so. Now, what I have here is I have the sine of 2 theta. When I plug in a 0 or plug in 2 pi, in all cases, I will always get 0. So this portion of the integral goes to zero. And here, what I get out of here is simply when I evaluate, when I plug in the lower limit, I get zero. When I plug in the upper limit, I get two pi. So this is equal to minus a squared times three over two times two pi. And the two cancels out. And so this gives me minus three pi a squared. And hopefully that's the same result as we got in the previous video. Checking over here, we say yes indeed, sigh of relief, and we got the very same result. But if it was up to me and they gave me a choice, I'd rather do this problem using Green's theorem than actually trying to figure it out using the line integral. But at least you can compare the two to one another and see that yes, Green's theorem does indeed work again, but the right side of the equation is usually a lot easier to evaluate than the left side of that equation. And this is how it's done.